Greetings and welcome to Totality Town. Earth is unique in its ability to see solar eclipses because astronomers have run the numbers and it's not possible to see a solar eclipse from the surface of any other planet or moon in our solar system. Solar eclipses are visible on Earth only when the moon casts its shadow on the planet. However, the moon's shadow is always there. So what would a satellite see if it passed through the shadow? Thankfully, we do know the answer to that. The Solar Dynamic Observatory is a satellite dedicated to observing the sun in a variety of wavelengths, each one corresponding to a different color. Its orbit is different from most satellites, though. Launched in 2010, the SDO does not appear to move in the sky because its orbit is geosynchronous, meaning that it's always above the same point on Earth. The SDO orbits at a distance of over 22,000 miles from Earth. That's more than 40 times further away from the Earth than the Hubble Space Telescope and traditional communication satellites. Its orbit is also highly tilted, and this is to prevent the Earth or Moon from blocking the Sun most of the time. Every year in March and September, the SDO experiences seasons of eclipses because the Earth regularly gets in its way. That's just how the orbits work out. When that happens, Earth completely blocks the Solar Dynamic Observatory's view of the Sun, and the instruments simply go dark for as long as the SDO remains in the Earth's shadow, and sometimes that lasts over an hour. The edge of the Earth appears fuzzy in those images because of our atmosphere. Even more rare, though, is when the Moon blocks the SDO's view of the Sun. This type of eclipse is almost always going to be partial because getting a truly perfect alignment with the Sun, the Moon, and a small fast-moving object like the SDO is going to be extremely difficult and extremely rare. Even if the alignment was perfect, the Moon's still not going to be the right distance away to block only the Sun's disk and not the corona as well. The SDO eclipse on March 7, 2019 was unusual because the Moon partially eclipses the Sun and then appears to stop briefly and then reverse direction. The Moon's apparent reversal is caused by the SDO first overtaking the Moon in its orbit and then the Moon catching up as the satellite swings around the Earth. Unlike Earth, the Moon has no atmosphere and so the edge of the Moon is going to appear crisp against the solar disk. This spectacular view here shows plasma trapped in magnetic loops on the Sun's surface. Sometimes these loops break and material is ejected out into space. Now there's always a stream of particles coming from the Sun, and when these particles are swept up by Earth's magnetic field and interact with our atmosphere, the result is the aurora borealis, or northern lights. Large ejections of material which hit Earth cause geomagnetic storms which can damage satellites, interrupt communications, and even cause large-scale power outages. The mission of the Solar Dynamic Observatory is to monitor the Sun 24-7 so astronomers can keep an eye on such space weather and study the solar cycle so they can predict future solar activity. The SDO is not the only mission in space dedicated to observing the Sun. The longest running solar telescope in space is SOHO, first launched in December of 1995. It was joined in space in 2006 by the STEREO mission, which involves two widely separated satellites looking at the Sun from different angles. Although these three missions have been around for a while now, a new trio of tools and missions has recently marked the beginning of our next chapter in solar exploration. The Parker Solar Probe was launched in August 2018, and it now regularly passes into and out of the sun's corona. In January 2020, the largest solar telescope in the world saw its first light when the National Solar Observatory's Daniel K. Inue Solar Telescope in Hawaii opened its dome for the first time, and it entered its fully operational phase in the fall of 2022. 
Finally, the third one is the European Solar Orbiter, launched in February of 2020 and has been measuring the solar wind as well as positioning itself to provide us the first ever direct views of the sun's polar regions. To learn more about each of these missions, new and old, visit and subscribe to the Totality Town YouTube channel. Hope to see you again here on Totality Town.